It's time for Thriller Thursdays, here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Chapter 16 Lieutenant Sabian was not happy. His own men scampered out of his way like bunnies in the path of a bulldozer. Blackjack and I were once again on the same side of an interview table at Robbery Homicide, though this time nobody had bothered to cuff us, either because we were not actually suspects, which was possible, or because Jack's handcuff trick was starting to embarrass them, which seemed more likely. Two corpses in two days is a bit much even from you, Justice, the good lieutenant barked, his lips curled around the remnants of his cigar which appeared to have been extinguished hours earlier. Hey, I chimed in, it's a personal best for me. You shut up now, Sabian growled while he paced the floor on the other side of the table. When he got like this, I liked to imagine him in a giant bear suit. It amused me, and I could tell that it confused and annoyed him. To be fair, Lieutenant Jack said, the first corpse doesn't really count. I was just nearby when it dropped. I didn't actually discover it, for which I blame her. And I blame you, I said. Right, Jack continued, it's still an open point. Best not to bring it up at all. I'm going to bring the both of you up, Sabian glared, on any charge I can think of just to get you off the street. Such as what, I protested? Gross competence? Aiding and abetting the pursuit of law and order? How about the break and enter at Licious Studio, Sabian said, his palms flat on the table glaring at me. There was no break, Jack said, leaning back in his chair. There was only enter. Is that even a crime? Actually, I said quietly as if an aside, I think it is. Jack was silent for a moment. Really? he asked. Pretty sure, I nodded. Jack considered this. I should really stop using that line, he said. Sabian's rage had settled into a nice, quiet seethe as he regarded us. What is this? he asked in horror. You two making some cozy time now? No, Jack and I said in unison. You owe me a Coke, Jack said quietly to me. Sabian slammed his fist upon the table. Damn it, this is serious, he bellowed. You two are up to your necks in this, and if you want to see the light of day any time soon, you will stop with the Amos and Andy routine, and I mean now. Amos and Andy, I said, legitimately confused. I think he means Burns and Allen, Jack offered helpfully. What about the Bickersons, I suggested. Jack smiled as if he had completely forgotten about Sabian. I love that show, he said. Sabian's face went purple with rage, and he slammed the table and took in a long breath as if preparing for one of his epic tirades. One second, Kingfish, Jack smiled. We'll be right with you. Nelson! Sabian hollered at no one we could see. Book these two on suspicion and get them out of my face. There was a small pause. The door did not open. Nelson! Sabian bellowed again, louder but with the same result. Good help is hard to find, Jack said with a sad shake of his head. Sabian sat heavily in the chair opposite us and grasped both his temples at once with his great meaty left hand. What is it you two want, he said, his voice lower. What are you after? Protecting the interests of our clients, I said. You don't have a client, Sabian glared at me. and Mayfield paid you off and closed the books. Why, Lieutenant, I snapped, you haven't been eavesdropping on an attorney-client interview, have you? Sabian flushed. She told us when she made a statement, he said testily. We have actually been speaking to the principals in this case, you know, on account of the fact that this is the homicide division. Speaking as a taxpayer, Jack said, I'm delighted. I don't think you understand, Sabian said, as if explaining himself to a guinea pig, or perhaps a ham and cheese on rye. That means that it is we who investigate murders. We, not you. You peek in windows and spy on housewives and do whatever else we can't be bothered to do. I haven't followed a housewife in days, I said. I have, Jack said, but just to stay in practice. Those little vixens are cunning. Again with the wise routine, Sabian wailed as if he were a moose with a toothache. How about I tell the papers what you two comedians were doing while Janet Timms was being murdered? Jack leaned forward in his chair as if this were what he had been waiting for, and it probably was. That's a load, and you know that it is, he said. You dangled the story in front of I don't know how many news hawks, and then you got a phone call from somewhere, didn't you? Keep the whole thing quiet or else. Sabian seethed and muttered under his breath. Rogers, he said. You leave him out of this, Jack said. You called him because you knew we were friends, and you knew he'd run it anyway, and you knew that he'd tell me it was you that sent him the lead. 
Shut up, Sabian sulked. Who was it, Sabian? I chimed in. Who called you off? Nobody calls me off, Sabian barked. The Tim's murder will get solved, all right. It just gets kept quiet while it does. Jack shook his head. You don't find that suspicious? It don't matter what I find it, Sabian said crossly. It is what it is, and it's tough enough solving a murder while you tiptoe through the tulips. So if you two could stop dropping bodies in my lap, that'd be swell. Jack leaned a little further forward. Any more and he'd be laying on the table. Sabian, did you ever stop to wonder how the story stayed out of the papers? Sabian's brow furrowed. What do you mean? You know how, he said. Word came down the ladder. Right, I said. That's what stopped you from talking anymore, but the cat was already out of the bag. So what kept it out of every paper in town? I didn't call every paper in town, Sabian said. Mike Rogers was my first call. You were going to give him an exclusive, Jack smiled, and tell him everybody was running it. Sabian grinned back at Jack. Salt in the wound, he said. Jack shook his head. The question still stands, Sabian, he said. You think you have enough pull to kill a story like that? You think Mike Rogers would just drop it because you said so? Sabian paused, as if something were sinking through the first few layers of his thick skull. What are you saying? Somebody got to the Gazette editors I offered, and we're betting it isn't the same person. Or the same side of the law, Jack said, leaning back in his chair. Sabian considered this and waved his hand dismissively. Cut it out, he said. Lish and Tims were running a blackmail scheme, maybe more than a few. One of their victims must have caught up with them. We'll find out who, and when we have proof, it won't matter who they know. This last part was a veiled threat toward Jack. Roger Mayfield was clearly still suspect number one. That's a nice theory, Jack said. It might even be right. Or maybe Janet Timms stole her back catalog from Jimmy Lish, who then shot her in reprisal. And then returned to his studio, I offered, where in despair at what he had done, he shot himself in the face. And then hid the gun, Jack added, and tried to burn the place down to cover his crime, I said, warming to the theme. Nelson! Sabian bellowed again to no effect. Who's Nelson, I asked Jack. He shrugged. No idea, he said. But I wouldn't want to be him. Just get the hell out of here, Sabian said, raising his hands slightly in the direction of heaven and shaking them as if making a strong request of whoever lived there. Get out of here and stay off this case. You hear me? No more bodies. Sabian, Jack said, rising to his feet. Jimmy Lish didn't get more dead because we found him. It was just basic detective work. You might even have got around to it eventually. Out, Sabian bellowed. Out and stay out. Come on, Gracie, Blackjack said. I know when we're not wanted. Thank you for listening to Thursday Thrillers right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic live and theatrical audio plays, Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases from our United Artists of Audio right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.